following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour on this a wonderful Monday. I am your host, David White. And of course, as always, uh, what else can you say? It is a uh, uh, da, 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 something going on. Something's wrong. What's going on? It sounds like I'm kind of popping in and out. Don't know exactly what the deal is. Uh, maybe that's better. I think so. There it is. Found it. I'd hit a knob. Anyway, uh, we come every day to you, every trading day, and uh, we always start about this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Every trading day. Anyway, um, it is a quiet day, uh, absent of anything called a volume. We're up six points on the S&P cash at a 2042. Uh, 1.65 billion shares. Uh, this is extremely light volume. Um, and... Uh, don't be surprised if we have a big move probably on Wednesday, maybe even late Tuesday. Right now, the market is doing one thing, and probably a lot of people haven't thought about it, but Janet Yellen is speaking tomorrow. And just like the Fed meeting, everybody is waiting for every word uh, to come out of her mouth before they yet again start to wait for the next word that will come out of her mouth. Um Many people are of the opinion, and I am too, that uh, we would all be better off if she would just shut up and go away. Uh, just say whatever she's going to do for the next year. Just say, we're not doing anything. We're, we're making one rate hike. It's going to be in the middle of the summer. And leave. Do not come back. No more announcements. No nothing. But she won't do it. She'll constantly torture the market. Um, and mostly it's because there's little or nothing that she can do now. It is basically uh, our economic policy is one thing, and that is trying to keep the dollar from going any higher. That is the Treasury's job, and they throw cash around ad nauseum. Uh, in fact, I think uh, eh, Tuesday was the last day that the dollar index was under, under 96. <clears throat> we got under that to uh, 95.84. We're at 95.96. <clears throat> uh, and again, a lot of pressure uh, from someone that invisible hand in the market. But uh, my guess is uh, we are probably in this 96 to 98 range on the S&P, I mean, on the uh, dollar index for a while. And uh, by doing that, uh, they brought the volatility of the market down too. Anyway, uh, as we always like to do, start the show with a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. If you missed uh, the show on Thursday from Andy Heck, he talked a great deal about silver. His, uh, cross, uh, his uh, journey across the Rubicon happened in 1996. Uh, but on 1980, Texas oil barons Nelson Bunker Hunt and Herbert Hunt failed spectacularly the corner of the market in silver. Uh, I sat many a day uh, next to the Hunts. Uh, they were a giant fans of a place called Stroud's downtown. Uh, it was a place that uh, we would go to uh, after the uh, family went to church on Sunday morning and where the uh, hunts would go before the uh, football game. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Nelson, uh, not Nelson, the other hunt, uh, owned uh, the NFL football team. And uh, both of them would come together. They like to eat at that Stroud's place. So we'd see him there all the time. Of course, this is 1980, eh, so maybe 78, 80, 82. 
Uh, it was not uncommon to see him in there. And I don't know, maybe because it wasn't Hollywood, everybody didn't gawk. They just kind of, you know, that's the guys there. A lot of people give him hard time about the football team always losing. Uh, at that time, it was run up the middle three times and punt. And uh, the all-time scoring person of all time, of course, uh, was the uh, the uh, uh, extra not extra point, but uh, field goal kicker for the team. Uh, it was uh, horrifically bad, and why I never got into football. Uh, they would lose three fourths of the games every year. After I think one in the Super Bowl in '73 or '72, something like that. Anyway. Uh, very interesting. They tried to corner the market, uh, and uh, for, since then, the uh, Commodities Exchange uh, Corporation uh, has done a lot to make sure that uh, people couldn't try to do this in, in uh, ever again. Uh, in a single day, the silver plunged from $21.62 to $10.80 an ounce. Uh, the Bouch, Halsey, Stewart & Shields, the brokerage firm that was affiliated with the hunt, nearly went bankrupt. Uh, they had to get a uh, hot money injection uh, to uh, keep them going. So uh, whether it's a uh, Lehman moment uh, or uh, uh, any other moments of these big houses, uh, everybody is susceptible. Uh, at one point, you get bigger than the, than the uh, market. You become the market, and then anybody uh, in the world can come after you, which they did on this day in 1980. Lamar, yeah, Lamar is the other one. I couldn't remember his name at the time. Uh, but uh, eh, both billionaires, just a less, few less billion. After this thing, it took them about 12 years to get up to the billions that they had in 1980 uh, that they washed away. Uh, Microsoft, uh, while not moving, is a little embarrassed over the weekend if you missed it. Uh, they had to publish an apology for its a Twitter chat bot. Uh, named Tay. Uh, a few people have figured out a way to uh, make it uh, kind of a hate-spewing Hitler apologist, uh, among other things, over the weekend. They basically had to turn it off. Kind of reminds me uh, when those uh, uh, Hallmark cards came in that you could re uh, record your own message. It was always the famous, uh, the uh, uh, most uh, used stunt for high schoolers to go in there and record... Uh, various uh, obnoxious and profane uh, recordings in those cards that you can record your own message in. Uh, anyway, uh, so Ted was uh, a tad sexist, racist, and other awful lines on Twitter. The bot, the bot began to parrot those vile utterances and later began to adopt an anti-feminist pro-Nazi stance. Uh, they pulled the plug on Tay after 24 hours. Uh, not the only company to uh, have egg on its face over the weekend. Facebook also uh, was uh, asking whether the bomb went off. The problem was they sent it to everybody in the world, and so everybody was looking under uh, their uh, beds to see if a bomb had gone off anywhere in the world. Uh, they had apologies. It's uh, one of these apology tours over the weekend. Uh, on a quiet day, we're up six points on the S&P cash with no volume. Everybody, including the market, holding its breath for an utterance from Janet Yellen tomorrow. Time to, uh, time to get in some of that extra sleep. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave. Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And a kind of interesting article I saw over the weekend from uh, about Ray Dalio, Bridgewater, the biggest hedge fund in the world. About $160 billion uh, out of Connecticut. Uh, but it was talking about the culture of these companies and uh, why they tried to kind of put a great face on it. Eh, I have a feeling that most people wouldn't like working at this place other than working there for the cash. Um, and uh, it's a great deal what you see of that kind of New England culture of cash, of money. Um, he basically says that uh, yeah, they go after uh, anybody's weaknesses, and uh, it's more like being uh, and working for a drill instructor than anything else from past employees that left. A lot of people like to stay there. The cash is incredibly good, uh, but uh, we see a lot of kind of movies uh, that are kind of uh, uh, endemic of what it's like to work in these places. Uh, we see uh, The Devil Wars Prada gives you a good indication what it's like to work for uh, divas uh, in the clothes industry. That's a thinly veiled uh, look at uh, the uh, woman that used to run Vanity Fair. Uh, but there's a great deal of those, uh, that kind of culture of dog eat dog. Uh, he put a very nice picture on it. Uh, the downside, of course, were the people that had left that said what it was like. I don't know if this makes anybody any better. He says it makes them a better person. I think it may make them a tougher person, uh, but so did the military. But uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting if you uh, want to check it out. I think it's well worth the read. Uh, and we're going to get into charts fairly quickly. I didn't think anything was going to be going on of merit today. So we're going to look at a, a few stocks. Uh, let me get this uh, going on here. Um, that uh, maybe uh, in a continuation of that uh, double repo pattern. I thought maybe people wanted to watch it. Right now, there just isn't that much to actually be doing. Um, like I said, there's very light volume. Um, if we, uh, let's uh, look at the, the movers here. Hang on just a second. Get a few things going on. Uh, I don't need to do that. 
keep on clicking on the wrong things these days. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, there we go, movers. Maybe that'll be a little better. Okay. Um, of merit for things moving out here, let's take a quick look. Get the screen back up. There we go. Uh, you're probably not a pretty happy person if you were in a Prius a biosinus, a Biosciences, he said. APRI is the symbol on that one. And of course, it's a penny stock, but it's off uh, basically 50% this morning. Vericell Corporation, VSL, uh, down 10%. Uh, Noble Energy is off uh, 10%. Uh, that one's 2932. Uh, Performance Group is off 7%. Violin Memory. Uh, this uh, was one of those IPOs. It's uh, at 43 cents, off a little. Uh, I just thought it was interesting that the, this thing was still in business. Uh, SRPT is off 2%. Eh, not such a big deal. Cliffs, uh, although uh, it had a nice range earlier in the day, is now flat. A res uh, Pharmaceuticals, ARLZ, up a percent. Uh, Atwood Oceanics, 2.5%. Uh, Leapfrog uh, Enterprises, uh, that's another penny stock, up 3%. Tableau Software, probably the most interesting to me. Let's pop a chart up of that one right now. Uh, Data is the name of this company. And, of course, uh, really popped pretty hard uh, on earnings last time. Uh, but up 3% today at 44.22. Uh, uh, but... Uh, you know, I think all you're looking at is this big monster gap down uh, from, uh, is that earnings? I think it was. It was, uh, man, it's pretty, pretty nasty. Um, hopefully that's right. Uh, anyway, up to, you know, you're probably bouncing back up to this $48.80 level. Not a lot going on in it. And uh, what do we have? Veil up uh, almost 4%. Uh, quick Technologies, uh, QLIK, up, uh, to, 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 up uh, what is that, 8.5%. Uh, Calmain Foods, 8.5%. I tell you what, for a food company, man, this thing has had some big moves uh, lately. C-A-L-M. Um, you don't think of a, of a food company as being that uh, volatile. ACAD Pharmaceuticals, or Acadia Pharmaceuticals, up 20% uh, at uh, 24.54. Take a quick look at that. ACAD. And, uh, you know, a nice pop in this one. You got lots of volume in it, too. Um, basically, just up to the last resistance level, which is the January 25th level. So it will continue. Um, doing that. Uh, eh, I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to look at some stocks uh, that had been doing the double repo pattern. We're kind of continuing this uh, from uh, last week, last Thursday. Uh, Equinix, which is EQIX. Um, normally, what this is a good example of why not to get uh, too snaggled in this. What you don't want to see uh, is exactly this. Basically, it restarts the count on the double repo pattern we were talking on Thursday. And that is, you want to see it go below, go above, and then close below, probably an equal amount of days that it was underneath uh, the nine-day moving average. In this case, all it does is pierce it, then it gets ready to go, and it continues to go higher. Now, not bad. You had one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve days uh, above that level, my guess is that you might get a double repo in this one too. But again, I would need to see it close back below, close back above for a day or two, and then come right back down to get that signal. There isn't any volume in a lot of these stocks, but again, I suspect we're going to start seeing that volume come in on Wednesday with some fun buying. And as soon as uh, Janet Yellen gets uh, off the uh, blower, and everybody figures out what's going on, of course, unless she drops the chalupa. Um, Hartford Financial Services uh, is another one. But again, 
you don't want it just kind of meandering up like this. This isn't really a ballistic move. Uh, so I will try to get it. Um, Korea Power and uh, Corporation, the same thing. You don't want them to be this kind of just floating around, closing underneath, closing back above. Um, you may get 10 days, but that's kind of more of an ABC pattern uh, than a pattern where literally it comes off the lows. It stays on the, uh, on the high side of the nine-day moving average. It doesn't really come down at more than a day. Um, and then you get right back into it if it does. So one of the reasons why you actually want another close underneath that low within a couple of days when it did it before. When we look at uh, KLA 10 core, a good example of that is the 8th and the 9th of March out here. Came under it, went back above it. Now, again, this is just going above it. Normally, you get a much more pronounced move in a ballistic move. Uh, like this could do it. Uh, it's just the, not the ballistic move that I've been talking about with the GDXJ. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, we're looking at LAM Research, uh, another one. Again, if you missed it on Thursday, probably a good episode to go back and listen to, go through the double repo pattern of Joe DiNapoli. It is uh, nine, uh, nine, normally 10 to 15 days, sometimes as many as 20 days above uh, a nine-day moving average or a three-by-three three three displaced moving average. 
a close underneath that line, a close back above that line, then the next close below it is normally where you get failure. And it is not a prediction of failure. It is a basically confirmation of failure when you see that pattern. Uh, so conditions are right. Doesn't mean it will happen. Uh, normally, the thing to do is, of course, wait until you get confirmation to place your trade. Of course, if you have to uh, do options, you have to anticipate the move. Um, but uh, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, we continue to talk about a lot of these. I wrote a scanner over the weekend uh, to look for these so I could bring up some today. Normally, I just kind of trip and fall across them. So I'll be adding this to my list of stuff that we're looking at. Problem is, especially in equities, you don't get a great deal of them. In fact, uh, uh, Joe DiNapoli spent a lot of time using this pattern with commodities, which I have a feeling have a lot more parabolic moves than others. Uh, but uh, it kind of getting kind of close to a lot of these things. They've had some nice moves. Um, but uh, normally what you will also see in these that you're not seeing in these charts I'm showing right now is a great deal of volume. Literally, um, when you find the right one, like we looked at the uh, is it, uh, GDXJ, uh, you'll find everybody and their dogs getting into it. Normally, these moves are parabolic, where everybody's basically jumping in at the same time all the way up. And eventually, it peters out, you get one retest, and it comes back down. Uh, the, probably the other thing I didn't talk about on Thursday is that kind of euphoria and everybody getting in with the huge volume. And uh, that kind of sets up a, uh, not a permanent, but generally a fairly decent move down when everybody figures out there's not anybody else on the other side of the trade. Uh, these tend to not be that way because we're not seeing lots of volume, especially in LAM research over the last few days. But uh, just give you a, a counter uh, point uh, to some of those out there. What else do we have out here I wanted to look at? Uh, da -da -da. Now this one's kind of a bigger one, uh, Neo Photonics. I wouldn't be shorting a $13 stock, uh, but this is very much about what you're looking for uh, in these patterns. Um, I wouldn't short it, but a little bit more. And that is that you do see a lot of movement uh, into these. Uh, in this case, uh, this thing spiked with a whole lot of volume, telling you everybody was all getting hot and bothered by the stock on March 2nd. You had 3.6 million shares at $13.25. Uh, we've come up and tested that. We're going to test it with a whole lot less volume today. Now, what you need to watch for is the close back under uh, that nine-day moving average or the three-by-three three displaced moving average. Uh, but this one's a little bit better of that. You basically, um, you know, had a move from $7.61 to $13.25. Uh, that's a whale of a whale of a move for a stock like this. And normally, uh, that doesn't stop right there. But, uh, of course, you want a sign of strength over here on the right-hand side. We're going to have probably two days of light volume uh, if this thing does not get off uh, the stick by Wednesday, uh, you get a close back underneath that. You can see a fairly decent pullback to the previous low out here, which is the March 8th low. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically a 35% uh, move or, you know, 35, 40% move back down to this $10.05 uh, level would be a fairly significant haircut. Uh, what else do we have? Um, another reason why I eh, don't like that one. This is going to look for stuff. There is one coming up that I actually think that's pretty interesting. And what is that? Uh, that is, of course, CJ, uh, TJX companies, TJ Maxx. Uh, this is a kind of better example of, uh, what we're looking for. Hang on just a second. Um, Again, you get some juice in this one, uh, but this one has had how many days above a nine-day moving average, which gives you a good idea of how these things go. You still need the close below and the close above. I'm not going to count the one day on the ninth 
of March out here that it did close below the low. Uh, and the next day it was right back above it. Um, but uh, this goes back to the 16th of February. This thing has been in a trend or an uptrend. Doesn't mean that it's over tomorrow or even today. Uh, what you would want, of course, is the close below that line, close back above it, and then the next close below it signals uh, a fairly significant top. Now, this one has gone from $66.82 from February 8th uh, to, of course, the March high of $78.46. Um, you'll have to see whether or not there's that many more people uh, interested in this. Uh, but you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, you have 29 days, all but one of them, this thing has been closing above its uh, nine-day moving average. Uh, and that gives you the kind of idea just how these things come in. Now, you had one good sign of strength. That was on the 24th. And uh, that uh, was the close on that day. It's about $74.24. Uh, if you get a nice little move out here, normally you'll see those big volume days or the signs of days where the thing really started moving uh, as the day. Now, you had kind of another day that was like that, but the volume was uh, a whole lot less, but certainly more than uh, the other days, and that was the 17th. Um, so you're probably going to see some kind of top come in here to TJ Maxx. You'll see the close above it, close below it, and then look for the high volume days and the gaps. Um, I could see this thing coming back at least to the first gap uh, where that volume actually came in and of course um, you've got uh, a couple of days out there you've got three gaps but uh, probably looking for somewhere between seventy four dollars and seventy two dollars uh, back here again not that big a haircut uh, but it can be now here's one of the ones I think it can be uh, one of these ones that rolls over fairly hard uh, and that is the United Health Group uh, if we look at the bigger picture out here this thing went from 107 uh, 51 to 130, 35 a few days ago on the 23rd. Uh, what we continue to look at uh, is another one of these moves where uh, since uh, the 16th of February, this thing has been above the nine-day moving average. Um, again, that's why I'm thinking maybe you get a little pullback, maybe even tomorrow, uh, maybe even Wednesday morning. Maybe you get a close underneath uh, some of these on a pullback in the next couple of days. You pop back above that, maybe retest this high, and then get ready for the pullback. In this case, uh, I'd look for about 118 on this. That's the gap up of the 22nd of February. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments? Then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. 
And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The April 14th funding deadline is quickly approaching, so hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FD. I see. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, normally you'll get something like this, which is uh, we were talking about United Health Group. I did some uh, scans over the weekend uh, and some uh, background investigation in those double repo patterns that I said we're setting up, a great deal of them were. And it's, uh, like I said on Thursday, not uncommon to see a single day out here in a big, long move that uh, closes under. But uh, as long as it comes back into that pattern, the next day tend to hold. So we'll continue to look at that. But a uh, nice gap there at about one, what, eight, 118 on United Health, And any kind of failure up here would bring it back down. Uh, Valspar, of course, uh, talking about its buyout, no big deal there. Uh, and what else do we have out here? Eh, this one's kind of weird. I don't think I'm going to talk too much about that. We're going to get into some of the things that I've been looking at, which is uh, yeah, movers from last week. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at advanced auto parts, uh, kind of watching how the volume comes in on this one. Uh, December 16th, 162, it, uh, 2.6 million shares. We're into it today, pulling back, uh, piercing it, pulling back with, uh, significantly lighter volume so far. We'll watch how the volume comes in at the end of the day. But, uh, again, one of these things where uh, it is kind of tough to, uh, figure out exactly, uh, how these stocks, uh, hang up at this level. Uh, you probably, if you're bullish, would like to see this light volume come with uh, light volume retraces, which you are getting in this today. What you don't want to see, of course, is the significant pull back on volume. And sometimes you get one or two days like this, and then the volume does come in. Uh, we talked about this one, uh, Equinix, last week, EQIX. Uh, another one I'm watching here, it's going against the January 11th high, 318.36. From January 11th uh, on uh, Thursday, we had 548,000 shares today. Uh, probably going to do maybe a little bit more than half of that. So significantly coming into these uh, with lighter volume. Again, I'm not uh, anticipating what Janet Yellen is going to say tomorrow. Uh, and uh, just uh, keeping my powder dry. There, I brought it up in my newsletter this morning. There is an old, old saying. And normally the old sayings stay around for a reason, and that is do not be short a quiet market. And this is the most quiet of markets the last couple of days. So uh, we'll get going again. Uh, the worst thing you can do is actually push through a trade uh, where there is no money to be made. Uh, you will wear yourself out when the time is there to actually make the money. Healthcare Trust of America, another one hanging up at these highs. 
looking at it going against the February 3rd high, $28.72. 1.6 million shares got into it on March 17th. Really never really pulled off of that high very much. I got to 29 bucks on a little bit more than half the volume. Uh, kind of pulled back uh, Thursday with, uh, what would we have, uh, uh, 700,000 shares today, you know, nothing. Um, so we will continue to see whether any volume comes in the next few days. Not a lot of stocks out here giving signals at bottoms. So it was kind of interesting to see that Jack in the Box may have made a, or may be trying to make some kind of low out here. This is actually what you do want to see. Uh, I'm a big fan of trading hamburger company stocks, but uh, kind of interesting. My brother used to work for the for Jack in the Box in high school. He only worked for him about six months. Uh, February 18th, the thing had the big gap down, 8.2 million shares. I got hammered. You've got to like the move from uh, the low, February 18th, up to the high, the March 4th high. Uh, you had some energy in it. It wasn't too bad. You've now got a lower volume uh, light volume retrace going compared to that move up off the low. Uh, of course, you're below the $62.20 low of February 18th. You got below that on Thursday. Um, you did it with uh, one-eighth the volume, which I always like. Uh, and again, today you're kind of down around here about 200,000 shares. I'd like to see this thing just go sideways for a while or give me some kind of signal. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of these stocks over the last few months, uh, even back into November, have hit these lows on light volume only to see more bad news come out and hit it. We've been uh, tracking uh, the Jardin Corporation for a while. Oh, I was going to say, uh, um, I don't know. If anybody wants to call in, uh, you got still have time. Uh, I was, uh, I had been to Dairy Queen in probably 20 years, and I went in on Sunday uh, can anybody tell me if uh, they've really turned around all the stores like the one I went into? It was very nice. I uh, ordered some food. It was hot, tasty. Uh, didn't seem pre-made. The chicken wasn't rubbery. Um, it had lots and lots of stuff that you could uh, get in there. Of course, all the standard stuff, you know, ice cream and sundaes and stuff. But lots of stuff to eat. I don't know if uh, uh, they can make money doing it, but... Uh, I haven't seen kind of a turnaround like that in a long time. Um, they have in New Hampshire, okay? Uh, yeah, maybe you could call in and say whether there's something going on in Dairy Queen. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Buffett was getting into those last time I heard. And occasionally, you'll see something like that. That was kind of a, a big thing in the uh, late 80s and 90s was to uh, uh, trade uh, the retail stores you saw in the mall. Of course, uh, they were uh, pretty vacant yesterday, but uh, I thought it was very interesting to go into that Dairy Queen and say, you know what, I don't feel like I'm sticking to something, which is kind of uh, kind of what I remember forever, uh, was always sticking to something. Uh, nice, clean, uh, menu looked good, everything was interesting. Uh, the Jardin Corporation, of course, uh, we've been watching this one go up against its previous tie, December 16th hit. Nine and a half million shares on a sign of strength. Uh, now, this one looks more problematic than anything else. I don't know if they're still giving away too many breadsticks. Oh, you can call me at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com and post a message in the den. Uh, uh, what else? Oh, uh, uh, March 18th, uh, we... Went through it $58.38, so we have pierced it, gone above it. Um, not a great deal out here to say anything else. Um, you are in a, a fairly decent uptrend, uh, but that looks like that could be coming to a end fairly quickly. I really just like energy off the February 11th low up to this $58.38 high. I know it's just a $10 move in this stock. But uh, I just don't see the kind of juice that uh, tells me that anything has truly changed, unlike Dairy Queen, which maybe it's just me. But, uh, very interesting. Possible ABC and Lithium Motors, LAD. I uh, kind of like this little pattern out here with light volume. Not a lot of ABCs. 
Uh, but um, let's uh, take a look at this on the old retrace o meter. Uh, basically, he had a 50% retracement in lithium motors. Ideally, I'd like to see the $72.30 low uh, tested. I wouldn't trade it without it. But uh, you have to say that this thing has had a nice move from $72.30 up to $99.14. Has had a nice 50% pullback. The energy wasn't that exciting. You've had your 50% move. Maybe you could get something going on here. We'll look at the expansion when we come back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back uh, just, uh, just trying to finish out a few things here so we got something to talk about in the home stretch of course Tom O'Brien in the next two hours um, and what are we looking at I wanted to look and see what was coming up for earnings uh, after the bell tonight Iconics Brands uh, uh, Pacific Sunwear yeah, Yoku so uh, eh, interesting stuff we'll see what we have really look into next week about the 10th or 11th for earnings season to restart again. Uh, in the morning, do we have anything? Uh, McCormick. Uh, da, 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 da. Dave and Buster's after the bell tomorrow night. Not going to move the market, but maybe interesting. Uh, restoration hardware again. 
Uh, this one was one that uh, absolutely got smacked around fairly hard. That's after the bell tomorrow night. Let's take a quick look at that uh, coming up. Uh, we were talking about lithium motors when we left. I just wanted to go through this as a possible ABC. I do like the very light volume out here off the March 4th high into this 50% retracement uh, for the low and spike down of March 24th. I'll be watching this fairly closely, but so far, a nice volume retrace. Um, you know, ideally, you do get the test of the previous low. You do it on much lighter volume, and you have a little less uh, risk out here. Um, but uh, if the market started moving, we started getting an ABC. This is not a bad setup. Uh, that would take you from 85.19 as the uh, C point to a D point of uh, 12.03. Eh, and interesting. Uh, what we were talking about, uh, this is a Swisher Hygiene play. Uh, Comms. Did I already do that? I think I did. Hang on a second. Um, Swisher High. Oh, Restoration Hardware. I've got to actually. Um, you know, this thing got hammered down the last time. Let's clean this up so we don't have a great deal here to look at. Um, you know, this thing hasn't done anything. Did they pre announce? Yeah, that hadn't been enough time. It must have pre-announced, or the earnings date is wrong. Uh, but I'm showing that in two different places. The 25th, this gap down on 16.8 million shares. Hasn't done much since and not doing anything yet today. Um, always interesting. Uh, Tom O'Brien has some comments on this because I never go into the store. Uh, but maybe just uh, too much overhead, uh, too swanky of places, uh, too much inventory. Need to get those turns up get this thing moving well uh, kind of hard to tell uh other stocks of interest uh, just seeing if there's anything else out here that had the possibility of moving the market and i just don't see a great deal we'll go on to the next day and look for wednesday just quickly as i pop all this stuff up uh to uh, see if there's anything else lululemon on wednesday morning see if there's anything developing in this one uh, L U L U or Miss Lulu. Uh, man, this does not look good here. Um, you went into the first high off the low on January 12th with 12 million shares, pierced it again on February 2nd with 0.6 million shares, did it a third time at uh, 64.99. You could probably call this three drives to a top because each one did significantly go through the previous high. I'm right back into the trading range. I'd be looking at this one here for earnings, probably not play it in advance. My guess is this thing looks rather interesting to the downside. Well, that's it for today's show. We'll see you tomorrow, same bat channel, same bat time. Have a good evening. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.